Welcome to Weddings Unveiled, the podcast designed to help you build a productive, profitable wedding or event business. Here's your host, Angela Profit. Hi, y'all. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Weddings Unveiled, professional tips and secrets on wedding planning and event design, where we take you behind the scenes of our past experiences in the industry and share with you what we have learned from them and how they have made us stronger. This podcast will help you grow a productive and profitable business to launch you into success within the hospitality industry. Before we get started today, I want to ask you something. Are you looking for the missing piece of the puzzle to grow your business? Well, I want to invite you to watch my free online training on how I went from hobbyist to celebrity wedding planner and how you can do it too. You will discover the puzzle pieces that will absolutely transform your business from hobbyist to like, hell yeah, I can do this full time. On puzzle piece one, I'm going to go all into personality. Puzzle piece two, how to keep the high quality clients happy. Puzzle piece three, I'm going to talk about what separates the good from the great. On four, best kept secrets to profitability and all about implementing the strategies. And five, If you're going to attract the best, come on, people, you got to be the best. And then I'm going to show you how to create the magic and put it all together for you and your clients. So don't wait another minute. Go on over to go.angelaprofit.com. That's G-O dot Angela Profit, two F's and two T's dot com and watch my free videos and download my free workbooks that will take your business to the next level. Today, I'm super excited to talk with Rachel Apple. Rachel is the owner of The Bride Room right here in Nashville, Tennessee. Hi, Rachel. How are you? Hi, Angela. I'm great. Thanks for having me on. Yes. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule. I know this is like busy bridal season where people are like looking for their dresses. (laughs) It is. It's the best season. You have Holly Jolly with Christmas and wedding gowns. It doesn't get much better. <laughs> Yay! Well, for our listeners that don't know anything about dress shopping experiences or anything like that, before we jump in, can you share with us a little bit about your background? Sure. I'd love to. Um, so I'm a Nashville native. I'm a bit of a unicorn, I guess, in that way. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> and to be honest, I feel like I'm just, I'm just a gal who has always known what she's wanted. So um, with that being said, when I was little, I used to go to, do you remember Joanne's where they had the craft? Oh, totally. Totally. Yeah. I and still go there. Those, yeah, me too. Um, the, the filing cabinets with all the paper patterns. <laughs> yes. I would sit there for hours and I mean hours of like flipping through the books and picking out like the perfect dress, the perfect skirt. And I I have no idea why I never bought the patterns. I just wanted to envision it. (laughs) Um, I just always loved creating. I have no, I mean, it just started from that young. My mom will tell you like, I don't know what my mom ever did when she was just chilling in the craft store with me, but, um, (laughs) It just kind of started there. And then I guess fast forwarding, I've always had this obsession with dresses um, and just going through the process. And I don't know, there was something about, I guess, seeing it in magazines and TVs. There's just something about when you see a woman in a gown versus jeans or something where she's taking the time to get dressed, take care of herself, just really like get into it. Um, that it just, it's a transformation. You see it in her eyes. You see how she carries herself. Like there's just something different. And it's always amazed me. I just always have loved looking at that one specific moment and seeing it happen. Um, so I, I've always had that desire from a child, like from as a child. And then in high school, I sketched gowns. It was just like a side hobby or, you know, if I didn't want to pay attention and lit class or something like that, <laughs> I'd just sketch it up. Um, and then in college, I studied fashion merchandising and interned at Kleinfeld's in New York. So you probably That's know that awesome. from the show, Say Yes to Dress. Um, so I was there for a while and now that I learned about bridal, <laughs> um, I bet. Climbell is the oldest, largest bridal, is bridal store in the nation with a reality TV show. So put all the things together and you're going to learn a lot. So, um, I was at Kleinfeld's for a while and then I ran a different bridal store here in Nashville for about four years. 
and then helped start a children's clothing brand and then took over the bride room three years ago. So the store has been around for 18 years, but I took over about three years ago. That's awesome. I love that you knew like at a very young age because gosh, I feel like life would be so much easier if I just would have known. And, you know, cause so many people go through like these confusion stages of like, Oh, I'll try this. Oh, I don't like that. And then, you know, move on. So that's awesome. How yeah. was, um, what would you say is like your crazy, craziest experience at Kleinfeld's? Like anything you want to share? <laughs> um, I, I would say it was my first day. <laughs> oh yeah. So um, at Kleinfeld's, I'm sure you guys have all seen the TV show, but there are, the store used to be in Brooklyn. So they have like this group of women that worked in the Brooklyn store and they're like the OGs. Um, and they do business very differently than they do in 2018. I can tell you that much, but so, uh, this consultant that they put me with you shadow day one and they're like, Oh, don't put her with her. Oh, don't do that to the Southern girl. And I was like, Oh my gosh, like how, how, how bad could this be? So we walked in and, uh, the bride that we were working with, um, had a lot of like tattoos and things like that, which is, you know, totally normal basically. And she, um, the consultant <laughs> talked to her for a minute and she went out and got three dresses and she came back in. She was like, your dress is in here. And I was like, what? <laughs> is this how you do it? Wow. So, um, yeah, the girl bought a $32,000 dress. <laughs> and tried on three? Got three. Yeah. Wow. So and I it... just, I mean, when I left that appointment, I was like, oh, where am I? You know, like right. I, I was in college, $32,000, do what? <laughs> You know, like you can get a lot of things like a house, a payment, down payment, car. <laughs> oh, anyway, so that, that I think we, I started off crazy. So from there, everything else felt normal. <laughs> oh my, but like, did they, did they teach you there? Like how to profile someone? Cause like I've had brides come in and they're like, so I went into this one store and like, they were looking me up and down and like being judgmental. And I'm like, no, no, you're not educated. They're looking you up and down to look at your skin and your hair and your body shape and your body type and how long your torso is and how long your legs are because they automatically in their head know, like, just let me pull some things for this person. And so the experience that people have when they go prior to working with us versus us setting up the appointment and telling them kind of expectations, I feel like is so different because they don't know what to expect. But we tell them, like, allow the consultant to pull the dresses and look at your body and don't feel like they're staring at you. So I don't know if that's something that they teach you on how to do um, you know, I've never worked in a bridal store before. So, or is that just something where you have a good eye? What do you think? Uh, there's two, two ways to handle it. The way that I was, the way that it happened for me is that it was a learned skill. Um, but you can definitely educate in terms of how, like you can help figure out, it's like solving a puzzle, right? Um, but the thing is, is that in this puzzle, you don't necessarily get to pick pieces. You know, a girl yeah. could have a, a figure that by definition, she should wear X dress, but she hates X dress and she would rather wear this, this dress. So, um, you can definitely find ways in which, you know, pull things that, you know, will make a girl feel good and confident, but ultimately there's, there's such a big part of that puzzle that it, it, it's just a matter of like filling it out, you know? So there's no, there's no direct answer for that because it's, there's personal opinion that's associated. I'm yeah. sure you experience that too. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, absolutely. However, it's like, we definitely have a process and a strategy that we right. follow, but every, everything, all the information inside of that process is custom to the way that client needs to feel good. Um, so do you guys have a process that is, would you say special or unique, like to the bride room? So when consultants, how you train them, and then when a bride comes in, how they ask certain questions, is there some type of service standard that you can expect when you walk into the bride room? <laughs> Yeah, for sure. So for us, we do a lot of what we call front loading um, in our world. So 
we don't have a lot of opportunity. Like a bride doesn't get to touch a lot of wedding things before she gets to us. Likely she's working with a planner. She's got a venue and a date, but after that, like she's not a lot, she's not real in tune with what's going on in the wedding industry quite yet. So for us, we have to do a lot of front loading because there is this, the first time anyone comes in here, it's the first time they know they're doing anything in the wedding world because for us, it's like, this is a big decision. It's going to take a long time. It's going to cost a lot of money but you've never done it before. You can kind of research it, but you don't really know what an experience is like until you're in it, you know? Right. Um, and it's the same way if like, if you were going to shop for a diamond, you feel like there may be a stigmatism about the salesperson or there, there may be a, you may not be getting the best deal or you may not, you just don't know what's really going to happen and you show up and kind of hope for the best. <laughs> um, right. And it's the same in our situation. So by front loading, I mean that we want to be able to have at least one conversation with our brides via phone because we feel like emails are great, but we need you to know us and we need, uh, we need to know you, right? If, if you're a very quiet person, like we'll know that over the phone. Um, you know, there's a lot of things like that. So we want to be able to have one phone conversation with you just to get like the vibe and let you get our vibe and know that we're not going to be super pressury. We're going to have a lot of fun. Um, we, you know, we're going to go through that whole process. We have to, of course, know the budget, the type they're looking for, where the wedding is, those, the day, like those very normal operational things. Yeah. Um, but after that, we do do a lot of front loading. We just want to have one conversation before they come in. We want to give them the opportunity to ask questions because a lot of times girls are very nervous when they come here. Um, not because we have a prestige that's like saying, oh my gosh, we're scary and super high end, but it's more so they just don't know, yeah. <laughs> you know, they've never, they've never shopped for a wedding dress before. So what's that mean? What's that look like? You know, the, can we try one on at Nordstrom's before? No, you can't. Can you return it? No, you can't. So we try to really give the educational piece beforehand that way when we get here, we can kind of really like relax and have fun because yeah. I've discovered that logistics kill joy <laughs> really mm -hmm. fast. <laughs> And so we don't want that to happen when you're here. We want you to be having the best time you can possibly have. Yay. So what are your thoughts and best practices for the brides that say, oh, I want all 10 of my bridesmaids slash sorority sisters and my mom and his mom to come in? Like, what, what, what do you say? <laughs> yeah. It, that's a, it's a tough question because it gets asked a lot. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, and I think that that stems from the need of a, approval. Um, we are in 2018 and Instagram is how we live. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> our let's be real. And they compare everything to everyone. Like it or not, it just is what it is. So when someone suggests or asks if they can bring 10 people, our response is we don't have a rule. <laughs> What we ask is that whoever you bring, it's quality over quantity, and you have to make sure whatever opinions will be given to you, you warrant and you want. Because sometimes people can steal your joy because they have decided to give an opinion you didn't really want. Right. So ultimately, when the day is done, it's two people. It's you and your, your partner, your fiance, your husband, whatever. Um, so... At the end of the day, if you're going to look back on pictures, we want you to remember a dress that you picked, not someone else did. So that's the way we kind of handle it. We don't give them a harsh rule because ultimately it's their choice. They want right. 10 opinions. Sure. Will it make it harder for you? Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's where you, you have to, for us, we always like to get the brain back to the heart because sometimes it sounds like one big party, which is what they're really wanting is a big party. And then in reality, they get here and they're completely overwhelmed. So if we're able to like let them circle back for themselves to say like, we want this party, but let, maybe let's just have it after I make this decision, you know, because along the way, they're going to feel the judgment of other people, whether they want it or not. Yeah. I have so many brides. They're like, so what do you think? Like, should I ask my mom and my maid of honor and my sister and da 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 da? 
And I'm like, well, let's go through the first meeting first and then, and then let's circle back to that. Cause I try to get a feel for their personality to mm-hmm. see if it's like a strong personality or do, are they a decision maker? Do they really need 50 opinions to feel good about a decision? Cause everybody's different. It's kind of funny. Um, but yeah. whenever I have girls that know, I try to say, okay, if we're going to set up the appointment, like give us a heads up so that we can give the shop a heads up. Yeah. Um, how do you guys handle, and you may not even do this, but do you still have people these days that try to come in without an actual appointment? And how do you guys handle that? Oh yeah. We have walk-ins. Are they normal? No. Are they an exception? Absolutely. If we have a walk-in and we can help you, we're here. If we can't, we'll let, you know, we'll let you know that these, we have to, we hold a space for appointments for a reason and they take priority no matter what. So if you're a walk-in, walk-ins don't normally translate to a sale for us. Like they're yeah. not normally our ideal client. Um, we try to serve whoever has chosen to show up in the best like that we can in the few seconds that we have, because <laughs> we know that Yelp reviews are real. Um, so we try really hard to show up the best that we can. If we can accommodate you, we'll do it. If we can't, we can't. Right. Well, and instead of like trying to fit everybody in and making everybody happy, at least you're like real about it. And you're like, we can only have so many people right. you know, in the store at once. Otherwise, it does end up taking away from everyone's experience. Um, and what what do you say is it? I kind of, well, I kind of know what our clients love about you guys because you are laid back and you aren't super like pressury, if that's even a word, Um, but it's just making the experience very lighthearted and not seem so stressful. So outside of my clients, what would you say, like, what is the feedback that you guys hear from other people and other brides that get their dresses from you? Yeah. Well, I'm glad your brides are saying that because that is for sure what we strive for. I think, um, I just got married last year and I work in the wedding industry. So I thought, oh my gosh, I can do this. I know what I'm doing. I have the expectations down. I know the budget in which I should plan for to have this type of wedding. And when you go through the process, I, I, so I got married in 2017. Mm-hmm. So when you go through the process, you're like, holy Moly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, do what? And how much for, excuse me? Yeah. Um, and so I, that was, so. I mean, it was the best money I could have spent because it was like such vital research for me moving forward that I it just, I mean, I'm forever changed for me. So with that said, we, I mean, just the things like we know that our ultimate client loves to be celebrated. Like that's what she wants. She wants to be celebrated because the reason she he- she's here is because of love. So we try to always bring it back to that, even though like amongst that is like, we must make money. <laughs> um, yep. We must make sure our time equals profit and not anything in between. So we try really hard to make sure that this experience is one that you will remember. Like I love it when I see my brides out in Nordstrom's wherever. Um, and they're like, Oh my gosh, Rachel. And they just come up to me and it's like, they just join alongside of me and it's not like they're scared of me or, and that is absolutely what we want. Yeah. (laughs) Anything different because ultimately like my ultimate goal is to create like a monumental like moment in a woman's life that reminds her of her true beauty and worth. Like that is like what our mission statement is. And if we do that by having a dance party or crying together or, who knows what, if we have to go outside in the sunlight to see what the dress looks like outside and take 800 million pictures, we'll do it. And the reason that we do it is because after I'm telling you, like after going through that process, I I just never felt so like, well, here's my money. I'm glad that you think this is cool. I'm getting married, (laughs) you know? Um, and it's just, it's one of those things like this is a pro this, the dress itself is one of those times in which a woman's making a decision for marriage that is just about her. Like the rest really is a lot about the rest. You know, it's about how many people you have and what does that look like? And it's kind of about serving the rest. Whereas this really is about you, you know? 
I, you can't talk to many people who don't remember or can't describe their wedding dress. Right. So, um, they know it. Yeah, you know it. And you know if you chose the wrong one. You remember mm-hmm. if your mom influenced you, you, you remember everything. <laughs> and yeah. so for us, even if a girl doesn't buy with us and they walk away and say, like, that was the best store in town, they just didn't happen to have the dress that fit my budget or that was the perfect one for me. You know what? Yeah. We won. We won. We won because we, we put, we did our best and we know we're not going to win every time, but we have found that our revenue is so much better when we just relax, <laughs> when yeah. we let ourselves be ourselves. I mean, we have dance in the dressing room. I have literally bent over crying, laughing in a dancing, I mean, in a dancing room. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds terrible. Dressing in a, slash in a dressing room. room. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, we just, and I think it's really helpful that I'm basically in the demographic of my brides in terms of age and lifestyle and things like that. So I think that is helpful in that way. But um, yeah, we absolutely want our brides to think that this is a laid back experience. Of course, we have to learn. Um, it's a catch 22. I'll tell you that much (laughs) (laughs) because you want to be laid back, but you also have to know how to run, how to close it. You know, you have to be able to have the right terminology to say like, why would you leave here? and go and continue on, right? You have to be able to say those words in all the right ways so that you, you close the sale and you don't have to do all the things. Yeah. Have you ever had that feeling where um, a bride's like, okay, this is it. I want to get it. And then you're like, I don't think that looks so hot on you. <laughs> <laughs> like, do, do you have those moments? You know, I, I, people ask me this all the time, and there's not one that comes to mind, like at the top of my head. Now, are there some that I liked slightly better between the two? Yeah, but there wasn't a wrong choice. And when we get to like one or two, there's not like a wrong, wrong choice. There's it's like, I feel like there's one better than the other. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Just from a like perspective of outsider. But no, I've never, I feel like I've never dressed a bride that was like, that that's not my favorite choice. You do not look great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But mostly that's just because in conversation, I, I just go straight for the heart, Angela. Like I just do it and <laughs> girls love, they love it. And I think yeah. that is because like trans, what's it not tra- transparency. I feel like is what the world wants right now. Yes. And if we're, if I'm able to go there in four minutes there, I'm already in, you know, so once you're in their inner, inner circle and they feel like they can trust you, then they'll try on that dress that they would have never put on, you know, and that you're putting them in that dress, just like, Oh, just try it for me kind of thing. But really, you know, that you're about to rock their world. Yeah. You know? Um, so for me, I, I, I honestly, like we just, I, I try to go straight for the heart. Like, let's just get here for why you're here. And like, let, I'm just going to, I'm doing it. And it, you got to be bold and brave to get there. And I get it. And maybe not in every wedding industry, like if flowers, you can't go straight for the heart. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I think that, I mean, I'm, I'm in their personal space too. Yeah. You know, I'm in, I'm in a changing room with you. Yeah. So, um, you know, with, I guess what I'm saying is that I'm able to gain enough trust in the beginning that by the time they go to make a choice, like they're not making a wrong choice because it's my job to guide them Mm -hmm. into making a choice that's best for them. And that's not on my agenda. It's just that like, I'm going to try to help show you the best way possible for you to show up the best way, you know? Yeah. That's awesome. Now, what about like, um, what's your feelings on, okay, they found the dress. Now, what about, do people, do the girls look more to you to say, okay, what about a veil, shoes, jewelry, or is, do you have your clients are like, okay, this is enough for today and I'll come back. Or do they kind of want to get the whole package when they found the dress? Uh, there's no two stories the same. I would say right now, I mean, decision fatigue happens real fast in this generation. (laughs) Um, They can really only handle one thing at a time. And it's like, I I also don't think they are ready for it to end. Like they don't want to stop it. You know what I mean? They want to continue this, this train. Yeah. Um, So I think for them, they, most of our girls are coming back for a veil because they just can't possibly make two decisions. so, but they could, we don't do shoes. We have some jewelry, but it's not our main 
it's not our, the meat of our business. Gotcha. Do yeah. people ask you like, where should I get my shoes? Where should I get my jewelry? Oh yeah. And I'm like, let me tell you, girl, I love shoes and I'm going to tell you all the places. <laughs> <laughs> what are your favorite shoes? What kind of shoes did you have for your wedding? <laughs> I had blue suede shoes. <laughs> cool. Yeah. I Love wish I got, I, I do like that song. I wish I had gotten something else, but when you get there, I mean, sometimes, you know, sometimes I was just there. I was like, what is this? I just remember going through that process, like towards the end. I don't even remember what we were doing. But I remember I was on the phone with my mom and I said, mom, it's just $3,000 more dollars. Like, it's not that big of a deal. Right. <laughs> and then I hung up the phone and I was like, and my husband, no husband, then fiance, he said, do you realize you just said that's another $3,000? Like, what's, what's the big deal? And I was like, oh my God, so what is happening to me? Like, you could get a Chanel bag for $3,000. Um, oh. Anyway, so sometimes you just get there, right? But um. Yeah, I just, I do love shoes. We always love when they bring them in. Um, but we send girls a lot of times just to like, we tell them if you're going to get an investment shoe, do not get white or silver or sparkly because you're never going to wear them again. Yep. So if you're going to spend a lot of money, get something you're going to wear again, like whip it out on your anniversary, like wear it on New Year's Eve. Like you need, you need to be able to wear them. And we always tell girls, whatever you start in for your shoes, you have to finish it. And you can't change shoes. <laughs> There's no like, I'm going to put my sneakers on at the reception. No, you can't do that because your hem will change and your dress yeah. will be too long. And then, you know, so anyways, and we have a lot of girls that buy really expensive shoes and they just have them photographed and they don't actually wear them. What? Yeah, it's a thing because they don't want to be uncomfortable. Right. Well, I was going to say like, I, I will probably say 90% of our brides, they all do change shoes when they go to dance. They're like, oh, I want flats. And I'm like, you know, the bottom of your, they're like, I know the bottom of my dress is going to be black. It's probably going to tear because I love to, to drink and dance and it's okay. And I'm like, okay, I'm just making sure you know that. Right. Isn't um, it funny? Like when you get to that stage, you're like this, this $6,000 dress, like who cares? It's going to rip. I'm like, <laughs> what? Like, come on. They're like, we can clean it. I'm like, yes, we can, but okay. It's That's just, so it's crazy. And I would say the, the worst thing, like other than a toothache is like your feet hurting on your wedding day and oh. walking around with like tight shoes. It, it like puts women in a bad mood. I feel like <laughs> right? Or you have to like drink more and then you're, you're not trying to go there. And <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. We, I mean, it happens all the time. I'm like, just go for comfort, you know? And then if you're, if you really think you can do it all day, like prove it to yourself first and then prove it to yourself on your wedding day, because yes, you yeah. have adrenaline going and yes, you're going to think like my feet won't hurt. I'll be fine. I've been out so many times in high heels. Like you have no idea. Yes, I do. <laughs> you're like, so, yeah, I do. <laughs> anyways, that's a, a pro tip, I guess, you know, just buy the yeah. fancy shoes, have them photographed because that's what everybody wants, you know, yep. you know, so, that's, and then just oh wear it, the ugly shoes are the sneakers under your dress and you'll be fine. <laughs> oh it my always, gosh. It always cracks me up, but it's funny. Yeah. What would you say like right now is the biggest challenge for like you as a business owner and then like any challenges that are repetitive recently for brides that are coming in looking for dresses? So I would say for brides, it's just the amount of noise that they experience on a daily basis. Um, I'd say comparison is, is really tough right now for a lot of our brides. I mean, we see it from body image issues to friends to budgeting like they it's it's a high comparison state right now and it's very hard to tackle and it's also hard to tackle amongst strangers <laughs> you know like yeah. they're meeting me for the first time and we we have a really good sense like if you got a body a body image issue rather you are 22 or double zero like we it, it comes it comes out fast in this process yeah. because you're exposed and you're subjecting yourself to the judgment of the people that you bring with you in a very loving way, but that's why you brought them is to judge you. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so I think that is harder for women than they realize. So being gentle in that process is a hard 
it's hard. Um, and the comparison amongst like peers in terms of their friends who got married or I don't know, I'm sure you've noticed this, but once you have a girl who's getting married, she's likely been in other weddings or she's amongst friends who are also experiencing the same like wedding process. So they're attending multiple weddings. So they co collectively collected these things in which they feel are very wrong and very right. And they're trying to outdo all the right things and never do the wrong things. And so we see that a lot with dresses too. Like they're trying to one up a friend without saying it out loud. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that can be hard because they are um, exhausting their options. They're over shopping and then they're highly confused. So that's just back to the lot of noise. Um, so I think that's a challenge for a bride. And also she's confused as to when she, she knows if it's the right dress or not, because reality TV has taught her that there is some sort of, you know, doves flying, crying <laughs> situation, <laughs> right? That yep. happens when she finds a dress. And for a lot, I would say almost 80% of our brides, it's a pretty logical decision. And of course, there are tears that flow here. They're always happy, you know, of course, right? But it's not like a, it, it, there's not, I mean, some people say when you know, you know, it's not true for everybody. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that's a hard, harsh reality for them to not have or to have. Yep, um, it, it is. And I don't know how you feel about TV and what it's done for our industry. Like sometimes I just, I'm like, that's not real people. Right. <laughs> and I, so I don't know if it's like setting good expectations or unrealistic expectations. Like what, what are your thoughts on it? I think the way that I, this is exactly how I would tell a bride in front of my face too. It's like reality TV is, is exactly how you see it. Like, do you believe everything on the Kardashians? And they'll say, no, absolutely not. Like it's all staged. I'm like, okay. So is that a show that you just watched? <laughs> exactly. Um, I'm able to pull from my experience from Kleinfeld as well. Cause of course the reality TV was being filmed there. Yeah. Um, so for me, I can just say, well, this is exactly what happened. And, um, they're like, oh, really? That really? I'm like, uh huh. Um, they also just filmed a, a reality TV show, very cavalry in the store. <laughs> oh, cool! Um, not that long ago, and uh, I was like, whoo! Reality TV is making my back hurt. Um, yeah. So I, I don't know. It, it's not helpful. I'll tell you that much, right? But I, I think I always try to tell them like, it's reality TV show. You take it or you leave it. If you cling on to everything that is true as reality in that show, then like, we probably won't get along. <laughs> um, right. But it is hard because you're up against a curve in terms of the education process. Like, actually, this is really how it is. Um, so, and I think it's just that, it, you know, we're in the Amazon world, right? Expecting more for less. You, you just got to meet them there somehow. Yeah. It, yeah. And a lot of it, again, has to do just with education and the experience and while um, we've done some some TV things, and uh, one of the things I'm like, you know, I'll I'll plan and design, but you're not going to tell me what to do. And I mean, there are times where like, okay, can you do this again? And it's like sometimes one episode it takes all day, and I don't think people realize that that mm -hmm. it's very very tiring. And they're like, oh, you're that's so fun. That's so um just amazing and yeah your life is so glamorous yeah yeah and I'm like I ain't getting my listen like getting my hair and makeup done like they'll take three hours I'm like I don't look like this usually <laughs> and it's not I mean I'd rather be like talking to my clients or like doing podcasts or you know it, it it's good if the message is right but I have found that with some of the shows, it's just so unrealistic and it does sell fake. And then I look like the bad guy because, you know, I'm just the messenger. I'm like, oh no, shit doesn't really happen like that, you know? Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, it's, but I am loving the fact that people are wanting more authentic, real these days um, mm -hmm. because I feel like we sell such perfection in the industry and we all know nothing's perfect. Come on. <laughs> right. um, but for people when they're buying their dress, like I do want that to be like their perfect moment. And I do want them to feel beautiful. Um, and I think that you guys do a lovely job making sure that you stay true to that experience. Um, 
So do know that. Um, what about other bridal shops in terms of when you have brides go to different shops, do they ever share experiences with you all? And if they do, like, how do you guys handle that? Yeah. Um, so let me, can I back up to your fi- your last oh, question sure. to finish it? Um, oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. The, it's okay. <laughs> I just had like a note written down here. I was like, oh, that what was that. Um, you asked me what the challenge like in the industry overall too versus yes. just brides. Yes. And my biggest thing that I'm on to right now is like the whole millennial thing, right? Everyone paints them as something problematic and decisive, right? All the things. And I'm like, well, we can talk about that or we can leverage it. So like pick a side, you know? Um, so anyways, I would say that's the biggest problem in, in our wedding industry is like it's changed. So let's accept it and learn to leverage it because consumer behavior will continue to change, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So, it is ever changing. That is one thing that I've learned about not just being in this industry, but just being a business owner. Like oh, you got to sure. keep up. You got to keep right. up. Stay right. relevant. Right. Um, but in terms of other stores and their experiences, we're actually, I'm actually friends with our biggest competition in town, which That's is awesome. crazy. But I mean, we text each other like, Hey, Sally Joe's coming over. Like this is, this is the situation. Um, so, you know, there's options in how we can handle things and that's just how we handled it. Um, and they actually reached out to me, so it worked out perfectly. Um, now if a bride has a bad experience in a store, they let you know, because within a few minutes here, they're like, oh my gosh, we are so glad we're here because you got a wow. Let me tell you about this other place. So we don't warrant, we don't ask for it, but Mm -hmm. it's, if it's bad, they'll tell us. (laughs) Yep. Yep. So. Um, and when that happens, like we, we don't talk about that store. We don't say, right. oh my gosh, like, can you believe that happened? Can you believe those people? No, you don't. Yeah. Any, it, like why entertain it? You know, but yeah. it's what Nash, the wedding world in Nashville. Woo. Welcome to it. You know, it's like, yeah. it has, we went from in Nashville, um, there was like four major stores and now there's like 30 stores or something crazy. What? Okay. I didn't even know that that were that, that there are that many. I mean, I'm familiar with, um, you know, the, the few that our brides go to and I will have a client say, Oh, well, what about this? What about this? I'm like, wait, is that in our city? Like I have to Google it. Um, Because I don't know if they're just popping up and there's like no PR or I'm really living under a rock. Like, I don't know. Maybe it is. Maybe it's a little bit of both. But um, but I'm finding that they're they're like small, at least some of my brides, what they're telling me is like they're small niches. Like they don't have like, you know, 500 dresses or even 100 dresses. It's like maybe 30 dresses. And so they're not they don't feel as overwhelmed and it's more boutique-y. Um, but also I know that th- they say a hundred people a day move to Nashville and with the amount of weddings we're doing and destination weddings we're doing, I mean, I feel like our market can handle it, but have you felt any of that business pressure from other people coming into the market? God, I didn't know it was that many. <laughs> Yeah, it's a lot. I mean, but like, it's, it's not just my, like, it's not just wedding dress stores, right? It's anybody like photographers, planners, like it's everywhere. Yeah. Um, I, for a while was grappling with this idea. Like I hated the idea of more stores. I was nervous that it was going to like spread my business more thin in terms of like, let, you know, like there's just more options. So naturally that's what will happen, right? Like in a lineage, it will pull it tighter rather than me skyrocketing up. Mm -hmm. Um, I was very nervous in that happening, but like we're, we're growing a lot like this year. So, um, I, I let that go though. And we just, I, I mean, we have honestly, our biggest thing was just just returning back to the basics. And so in terms of like a business standpoint, it scared me for a little bit. And I used to creep on people's Instagrams and just like (laughs) really like spend all of this extra energy and like, well, oh my God, she posts, um, did you see that? Can you believe, oh my gosh, yeah, you know? <laughs> so I let it all go. I mean, I don't follow any other store in Nashville. Like I'm friends with our biggest competitions, but we just text. I don't even follow them on Instagram. <laughs> um, so 
I just let everything else go and we just focus on us and we've grown. So I think that's because our city is also growing that Mm -hmm. there's, there is enough business to go around. And I think that I've learned this from, you know, you have the fixed mindset or the growth mindset and you got to choose one, you know, like you're, you're in either camp. And if I choose the fixed mindset, that means like, I'm not, I'm just not going to grow. So, um, it was, it's been a good year in that way in terms of thinking like there is enough money to go around. (laughs) There is enough brides to go around. And if you serve well and you do, like, if we do what we do best, then we know that we did our best and we know the money comes. So, I mean, it it does, it shows up, you know? So, um, I I think in terms of competition, it's never going to stop. And I think it's healthy. I've always mm-hmm. thought competition is healthy. I also grew up playing sports, so I like to win. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, but like what does your winning in business look like? It's going to look different from any other, any other person's. So, yeah. What um, do you, are you going to market? Like what do you see trend-wise like coming out next year? Like are you guys carrying anything yeah. totally new, totally unexpected, like – what can this next year bride expect from like the brado industry? Well, so we just got back from market. What month is this? December? <laughs> I, <can't laughs> I know. Remember. It's like, what um, <laughs> well, this will come out later, but we went to market in October. So this, how was it? It was, market is always crazy. Like when we leave, we're like, did we, what, what, what happened there? Um, but everything that we saw has like lots of beads <laughs> um, on wedding Heavy? dresses. Like heavy beads? A lot of beads. We don't have hardly any beads right now. We have a lot of lace and clean. We got no beads, but we're going to have a lot of beads. Wow. Okay. (laughs) Um, Not necessarily fully beaded, but like lace with bead work. We're getting, it's, uh, it is so crazy. Beads were popular in the late 2000s. I mean, early 2000s. Sorry, I'm thinking about it. I don't even remember. The early 2000s. And so that was almost 20 years ago. (laughs) So we're coming back. Yeah. Um, I feel like things do come around. Yeah. Um, I don't love the style. Like I feel like last year I walked in, I don't get out very much, but I think I like went into Target for something and I'm like, oh my God, all these floral patterns. And like, I just remember years ago, I worked with this image consultant who was working with this a client. We were working with this client together, this company. And um, she's like, now if you're short and you know you don't have a torso, like stay away from floral patterns and stay away from really large patterns because they don't really do well on short people. And that like, that's all I could think. I'm like, what the hell am I going to wear now? <laughs> and so last year I'm like, I'll just stick to black pants and a black shirt maybe. <laughs> It always works. <laughs> like never goes out of style. That's what I have on today, actually. Really? <laughs> oh, yeah. What about like, okay, so beads and, okay, no yeah. pockets. Are pockets still in? Are they going No out? pockets. So we didn't really do much with pockets. We have, a, um, uh, I always call it naked, but that's not the right words. Like it's very like shears, like a lot of like low cut, low back, you know, a lot of like a, like showing off the body type of things. Yeah. Um, Right now, like right this second, we're doing a lot of clean. Like all the dresses are just very clean dresses. We've also learned that when the girl buys a really clean dress, she also tends to have a somewhat like pretty high end wedding. I don't know how the correlation is, but um, they're either full lace or totally clean. And that's like demarcation for high end wedding. Yeah. I don't know if that's like a real, this is not data proven, so don't you know, don't get me there, but right, right. <laughs> just like something that we're seeing. But right now we're doing a lot of clean. We saw a ton of beads at market and like low cut fronts. We in Nashville, like with our store by data are 50, 50 split. Like we're, we're going to be like one percentage each way um, with ball gowns over fitted dresses. So we see a big dualization here. That's, I think that's mostly because we're in the South. If you were to ask someone their data in New York, they would definitely tell you fitted. Um, but I think that what has happened is the girls who are in now have been to all of the weddings where the girl wore the full lace fitted dress strapless. Now that everybody wants a strap, we haven't sold strapless in so long. (laughs) That's exactly what I was just thinking that I wanted to say that I don't think we had one client this year, this past year that had a strapless dress. Yeah. No, we did. 
Yeah, it is definitely. And I think that is just a product of them being, have gone, have been gone to a wedding where a girl had a strapless dress and did the, like the pull up dance move. You know what I'm talking about? I'm doing it right oh, now. Yeah. You just can't see me. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I think that is just a product of that. And now because of reality TV and because I feel like bridal has been somewhat like the veil has been pulled back a little bit in our industry in terms of how things are done and you know, the whole thing um, that girls are asking a lot of questions in terms of like, well, will this fall down and will this do this? And was it going to be uncomfortable all night? And they're a lot about like how they feel in something in terms of um, logistics, you know, like, Oh, I can't go to the bathroom in this big dress. And I'm like, girl, you are never, ever going to be alone on your wedding day. Like there's not going to be hardly any second you'll be alone. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So when you go to the bathroom, you have all those 10 bridesmaids that you brought with you. Mm -hmm. They can all help you. Yeah. Go to the bathroom. Like you're yeah. not going to be alone. So don't you worry about that big dress if you want it. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I feel like a lot of girls are going through every possible situation um, with us anyways, in terms of like, well, how does this do this? And how does it, they want all the questions. And I, we answer them over and over and we do not mind because we just, I, I mean, I think it's mostly because we know that they, they actually don't know. Of course, like if you write an email and you've especially spelled it out and you're like, did you, did you, did you read that one or, <laughs> or no, not this one. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's fine. We will explain it. Yeah. Uh, but it doesn't really happen too often. Like we, we have our, this business is interesting in the way that it is a product service business. So we have to do a, we have to perform a service in order to sell a product. Yep. And a lot of times like with the way that our business is structured, we get paid for the product only um, and not the service. Mm -hmm. So we have really, and now when I was selling dresses in like 2011, 12, it was so easy. Oh my gosh. It was so easy. Like, because there was no, there was no Instagram. Like it was so much, it was so much easier. Um, So we're really having to work I, like the way that we calculate it, it's four times as hard between the post, the communication, like it's four times as hard, the front load, which is super important, but it's just, it's more work, um, to make the same amount of margin that we've always made. Yeah. So for us, we have to protect our time, but also let the bride know she can have some, you know, like it, we don't want her to feel like, Oh, you can, but you must pay you know, like we don't want to put up that barrier just because, um, it happens a lot to them in this process. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, you know, you can do this, but you need to give us a deposit. You need to do, well, you know, that kind of thing. So we have to protect our time, but also have to learn when, when to say yes and when to say no. We've got right. a pretty clear, we have a pretty clear like line at this point, but yeah, absolutely. Um, This was awesome though, like really good nuggets and things for people to think of when they are handling either bridal appointments for their client or if their brides have questions, like where is the best place to send listeners to find out more? Yeah. So you can, everything in our life is very simple. Like that's how we like to keep it. Um, (laughs) Our website is thebrideroom.com. There's an appointment request on there. If you're looking for a bride, like if you're a planner or something in industry who is looking for a bride, just give us a call first that we can kind of get like the lowdown on what she likes and what she doesn't because you're kind of that middleman for us. And we like to know, you know, kind of what she's like before she gets here because if she's working with someone like you, um, you know, you do mostly high end weddings. So we want to make sure we're meeting her expectations where they are. Yeah. Um, and then, um, just follow us on Instagram. You'll see my face on there. Um, <laughs> especially a lot in 2019, we're really up in our game. So, um, yeah. Yeah, our Instagram is, well, you'll find it. So it's also at the bride room. So everything is super simple. And if you want to email us also the bride room, at the bridegroom.com. <laughs> awesome. Well, guys, be sure to go over and check it out. You got your website is very beautiful and it's easy and it's, it flows so beautifully. And I love your logo and the script and it's just very beautiful and very Southern. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys be sure to check it out. Bridegroom.com. 
thebrideroom.com, right? With T yes. and in front. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Rachel. I hope that you guys have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for listening and be sure to tune in next week and have a great day. Bye, y'all. If you found this podcast helpful, please share it with your friends. And I'm so very grateful if you will leave a review. Be sure you are a subscriber so you never, ever miss the juicy details of Weddings Unveiled. Also, be sure that you're a part of my email list. And if not, you can sign up at AngelaProfit.com where I share valuable resources and exclusive products with only my subscribers. Before I go, I want to ask you, if you have a story or a product to share with the wedding and event industry, please let me know. To be considered as a guest on Weddings Unveiled, visit AngelaProfit.com and submit a podcast guest form. Until next time, remember to stay productive and profitable. You've been listening to Weddings Unveiled with Angela Profit. Join us next time for more insights to help you build a productive, profitable wedding or event business. For more great resources, head over to AngelaProfit.com.